Hi, this is Ashwat Bobo here and welcome to the England vs New Zealand Test Series Preview. This is a bilateral test series which is going to be played in England. The first test match at Lords and the second at Edgebuston. To me, this is going to be a very interesting test series for two good reasons. One, New Zealand who have an eye on the World Test Championship Finals which is going to happen on June 18th versus India are going to get acclimatized to the England conditions. We all know as cricket fans, coming to England and playing test cricket is not an easy job. And New Zealand are definitely going to be pumped up and happy that they're getting two test matches before the big, big game. On the other hand, England are missing a lot of the key players. Johnny Bastow, Josh Butler, Sam Curran, Chris Wokes who played the IPL have been rested. And Jofra Archer, Ben Fox, and Ben Stokes, all of them have been ruled out because of injuries. This means England have a lot of new faces in the team and a lot of people who are making comebacks into the team. So this is going to be a riveting test series. First things first, Ben Fox slipped in the dressing room in a county game and injured his hamstring. So to replace him, Sam Billings has been drafted into the squad. And this is the first time Sam Billings is making the cut into the test squad. Haseeb Hamid makes a comeback. All of us know the young guy who played spin really well in the 2016 India series. He makes a comeback into the squad after a very good county season. Ollie Robinson is an exciting fast bowler who makes the cut. In the past few years, James Anderson and Stuart Broad have seldom played together in a test match. But now, they are in a position where they might have to play both of them together. So the England bowling attack might be James Anderson, Stuart Broad, Mark Wood who brings in pace and probably if they want a left arm spinner in, Jack Leach might be the option. Batting wise, the top three of England comprising of Zach Crawley, Rory Burns, Dom Sibley have been a little shaky in the last couple of series and now they don't have much time because Haseeb Hamid makes a comeback and James Bracey who can also play at number three and who's also a left-hander who brings in variety and he's going to be doing the wicket-keeping role. And Joe Root who has been in phenomenal form, he carried the team's batting through in the Indian series. Even though England lost, in India whitewashed England, Joe Root was a lone sparkler in the tournament. Ollie Pope might be batting at number five and Dan Lawrence, who's also coming out of a great county season, might also get a nod in. Craig Overton also makes a comeback. We all remember Craig Overton playing the Ashes a couple of years back. He troubled Steve Smith. He might get a nod in because he can also bat and probably he can fit in in the role of Chris Wokes or Sam Curran. To be very honest, this looks like a weak England side, but you never know England and England are always dangerous. Now, looking at the New Zealand team, the Kane Williamson-led New Zealand team, they are almost in full strength. Trent Bolt has been rested for the first test. He anyways will be returning into the 11 for the second test and that will give him a boost ahead of the World Test Championship final. So now a lot relies on Tim Saudi who is going to carry the bowling unit along with Kyle Jamieson and Neil Wagner, the bouncer specialist. New Zealand have a brilliant pace bowling attack even though Trent Bolt is missing. They have a well experienced and a variety of fast bowlers. New Zealand also have a lot of headache on which all-rounder to play. They have Mitch Santner who has done very well in the World Test Championship till now. They have CDG, Colin D. Grandholm. He's slowly getting back to his full fitness. I'm not very sure whether he'll be bowling a lot of overs if he, even if he's playing. And Daryl Mitchell who has been a revelation and who also featured in the New Zealand contract list which was released a couple of months ago. And he also stands a great chance to get the nod ahead of Colin D. Grandholm. The batting of New Zealand looks pretty solid. Tom Blundell, who was playing till the last series, his place looks under scrutiny because there are a lot of new faces also in the New Zealand side. Devon Conway, who has been a revelation in the T20 in the white ball formats, has now made the cut into the test team and even in the practice games, he has been in good form. We also need to have an eye on this talented prospect, Rachin Ravindra, the Indian born Rachin Ravindra, who has been making great progress over the last couple of years in the New Zealand cricket setup. Now he makes the cut, he is an opener, he can also bowl useful left arm spin and he has also been in good form in the practice games. But I'm not sure whether he will start because Devon Conway might get the nod ahead of him. Tom Latham would be opening the batting but I see a great battle in this tournament between Stuart Broad and Tom Latham because we all know how dangerous Stuart Broad is against left-handers, the record he has and especially when he comes around the wicket bowling to left-handers, it's going to be a brilliant battle. Kane Williamson has always been in good form, class act he is, but in England, Kane Williamson has played four games and doesn't possess a great record. So he would be really keen to change those numbers into big ones in this tournament. Watch out for Henry Nichols. He has been in great form too. The last series which New Zealand played, he got a brilliant big, big hundred. 
and Ross Taylor also has a great record against England and probably he's at the fag end of his career and he wants to prove a lot to the world and to the team management and more so to himself. This is the first time Kyle Jamieson is going to be playing outside New Zealand. He's been one of the brightest prospects of New Zealand's cricket team in the last one year but you never know. In England, coming out of your comfort zone and bowling with the Duke ball, it's going to be a very very new experience. Not to forget BJ Watling, what a great servant he has been to New Zealand Test Cricket. He has announced his retirement after the World Test Championship. So this will be the last three games he'll be playing in his career for New Zealand. This Test Series has a lot in store. And me as a cricketer and an ardent cricket fan, I'm really, really excited to be glued to the TVs and watch the game. And my prediction for the series would be 1-0 or 2-0 to New Zealand. I'm saying this because England are a depleted squad in the series and New Zealand are gonna go all guns blazing. So thanks for watching the video. I hope this video gives you a bit of information and insights about the bilateral series which is going to be happening in a couple of days. If you haven't subscribed, please do. There'll be a lot of content on cricket, sports and music coming up. Thank you for watching.